Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Yes! What? Oh my Here it is! Just recording. Okay. The tape never lies. Keeping it 100. The people drop off. You'll never know how good your football team's going to be until you play with maximum pep. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Keep it Open competition. Take over the north and never give it back. Smartest man. My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Cuts had to be me, we added the barber moderator Up and down, boys got you double checking Sad sack scrolling like a full drunk texting Flexing on the truth cause you know they never change Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Jimmy What's the name? What we do when we're breaking down the bears Fuck a play or a captain, all of the unchair The the truth, you see We laugh, we lie, so there's no way he's like Maybelline Straight to the truth with the vacuum in facts We got a sad nerd, but he's not just giving her sad Car crash, big impact like trick sad Every Wednesday night you got the smartest man and feel bad Now we know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun dip. We're back better than ever and we're keeping it a hundred Keep it one hundred Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man Justin Fields gets outside the pocket Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> I am going to let you take over real quick, Phil, while I reboot this monstrosity on my end to, to get it out of the way. I think I can handle that. All right. Um, keeping it 100. Yo, what's up? Yeah, no jackal tonight. Cherie is under the weather. Wish Cherie the best. No Claudio and no Jackal. So here we are, keeping it 100. All the frauds are are backpedaling and trying to do a 180. So that's where we are in this world of chaos that I call it. It's been challenging because, you know, when you put the time and effort into an analyzing offenses, coaching offenses, offensive line, running backs, receivers, quarterbacks, defensive line, and you look at these things and you just see it for what it is, you can know when people are full of shit and they don't watch tape and they don't study it, but they say they do or they regurgitate stats. That's why we say stats are for losers here. And we look, we watch the tape for truth. <clears throat> so, as I spoke to Chris Zorich earlier today, and we're going to have a guest coming on who, obviously, you all know how much I love this guest. I said, Chris said, you you know, you need to take a bow. You need to take a, a victory lap. You and Shane and especially you saying this is the best quarterback you've ever scouted. It's not close. You put yourself out there. You did it on Adam Rank's show way back in December. 
You did it on your show for years. Last year, we talked about uh, Caleb Williams. If he was coming out, he would be the selection easily in that draft, and the Bears wouldn't have got DJ Moore. Well, the Bears got a lot of winning lottery ticket. Let's not punish the Chicago Bears fans. It's unfortunate that we have a group of chaotic, I don't know, ass clowns at this point where we're just going to continue to fucking drive ass clowns, home. Ass clowns is definitely a solid word. Yes. It's beyond my level of patience now. The integrity with which I carry myself with, show me the fucking tape that you're watching. You got people backpedaling everywhere. I have not, you know, I'm not Chris Sims coming to the light right now. And I'm glad Chris is out there saying it. I've been saying this all along. And my guy, Chris Harold, giving us the tape here, all the college tape. And then watching Justin Fields just struggle with things that Shane has said that he struggled with in college. Just over and over. It's infuriating to me that he's doing the same thing as he progressed into year three. And then you mark, you earmark this as you're building, because people forget, you know, there's so many layers. And I get it. You're, you've been neglected and abused by the Chicago Bears and Ted Phillips. And you could point all the finger. I know Ted is a huge part of this. But guess what? The McCaskies love the guy. They're a part of the issue, too. You get Kevin Warren here trying to get a stadium. You get a new GM here. He's analyzing. He did not draft Justin Fields. He didn't. It's just the truth. Like everyone takes these things as shots. These We're trying to do truths here. Then you look at the stats. So the stats backed up what I was preaching for our patrons. Because I used to just do my video series on YouTube for years and just put it out there and everyone referred to it. It had 85,000 views and, and all these likes. And Shane, myself, as we went to TTNL and the old network, uh, I won't say any negative, decided to delete all the work that I put in. For all those years, breaking down Jordan Howard, Jay Cutler, Mitch Trubisky, the wide receivers, right? Charles, speed bump, Charlie Leno, all of that stuff. That's TTNL. That's me. That's Shane. That got deleted. So then, am I going to do all this work for free? And I don't put highlight tapes out there. We actually used the coaches' tapes so you could see, and you know, oh, shit, yeah, he knows what he's talking. I'm putting my face to it. I have NFL coaches, players, people. That's what this network stands for. I'm not here to sabotage anybody. I'm not here to ruin a career. I don't have an agenda. Me and Shane have turned down NFL agents. Hey, pump up my guy a little bit. Do, do some pump. No. Turn it down. We don't want that. We want the truth here. We have a motto, a credo, a mission statement, if you will, for this network. And now it's gotten to the point where you're, everybody's moving the goalpost and manipulating story. Shane had so much <laughs> receipts of utter, disgraceful, disgusting shit from people that I know, and it's just embarrassing. Like this world of tearing people down that you don't know is just a shame. And tonight we're going to have Cap on, and me and Cap and Shane like came up with this hashtag. Like, why are you afraid to be great? Why? Why have the big... Oh, they can't develop them. We can't take a good player, Shane, because the big... Does that even make sense? No, it it doesn't at all. We know how that goes, man. It's you know, you saw another quarterback go back to Buffalo tonight in Mitchell Trubisky. I'm not comparing the two quarterbacks 
stylistically or talent wise, because Justin is a more talented quarterback than Mitch is. But everybody was worried. Not everybody. Lots of people were worried when the Bears decided to move on from Mitch. Maybe Justin figures it out. Maybe he does. You can't. We have a better option. We have a yeah. we have a better option available to us, staring you in the face, and it's not costing you anything. It isn't nothing. It isn't. It's not costing you anything. And you always you can't just listen selectively. If the goal and you've you've been tarnished, you being immature, you the mature right. you understands hey this is a business this is a business so since sid luckman the chicago bears have lacked a what we call it a freaking dog at quarterback that gives you each and every week the front page analysis that okay no matter who's surrounding this guy he is going to help you be victorious that has not happened. You can go down the laundry list. It ain't about development either. It's just not about that. It's about stink. It's about guys that stunk, that didn't put the work in. They have talent. But, but Phil, at the same time, the, the thing that always gets me is, well, you can't draft Caleb Williams because the Bears develop quarterbacks. But we have to keep Justin, guys, because he's improving. Well, then who is that on? Who's responsible for that improvement? If that's your stance, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And Zach Sullivan brings up a point, and this is the thing that uh, right here, talking about Caleb not getting the medical visit done with the Bears this week. And this is what nobody knows. <laughs> we talked about it on our patron show. Who says that he didn't say, yeah, I want to push this back until after my pro day. The Bears can't send their doctors to California. Do a physical with this there. kid? A hundred percent they can, but nobody knows that. But they just want to automatically de default to oh, this weird. Means he, he doesn't want to be here. He just doesn't want to be here, and that's what that's what we can't. That's what we can't do. Weird. There's always a tone and a texture when you're trying always. to tear down the best quarterback that I have ever scouted. See, <laughs> when I put my name to that. I have to live with the millions of people waiting for that failure. So does our guest. He has to put it. And I'm saying this by doing the work, understanding what it's going to take. And this is the, the ground floor. This is how football works. An incoming freshman in high school. He might be more talented than the senior quarterback that I have in high school. Is he ready? He decides that. But I'm not going to sit there and say, no, nope, I'm sitting there. Or no, nope, he can't do it. I have to look at it from a analytical point of view saying this freshman gives all of these kids a better chance to be successful. And thus, I have to make that choice what's best for the team. It's no different. It's even easier when you're paying NFL quarterbacks and your quarterback that you have now is average to below as an NFL passer. It is everywhere on the tape. It is not manipulated. I've shown every person I've challenged all these little micro podcasts that swiftly go out there and talk their shit. I've challenged them. Bring your fucking tape on the show and show me this improving quarterback that is because it's not there it's not and the stats show it's not there so when those two universes collide like bright side bear that dude showing you the 225 and how many all these other quarterbacks had including a undrafted kid for the fucking bangles it's a backup and you are going to try to tell me we can't move on from the no, the best thing to do, right, Phil? Is do you want to draft? The do you want to address one. William because William is one of our strongest Justin Fields supporters. No matter what, he wants you to talk about one year wonder in college, Joe Burrow. Okay, yeah, let's not forget you. William going into his last year at LSU, 
fifth round draft pick. So the one year wonder that you're supporting potentially is the best quarterback ever. I don't you're know. You're basing how, that off one season. I don't know how clear I can make this, William. He is better than Burrow coming out of college. He is better than every quarterback that I've scouted. Burrow was a one-year wonder, as Shane said. He was labeled as a fifth-round possibility. Come, right. Then he had that big year with what? Just like Justin Fields, several first-round talent wide receivers out there on LSU at that time. Yeah, that helps you. Caleb Williams? No, doesn't have it. I'm sorry. Can't manipulate this shit. You can't take a, a RAS score or a possible undrafted free agent that's highly athletic and try to manipulate. He doesn't have any uh, a talented offensive lineman in the draft? No, he doesn't. God, you've made every, every error when it comes to this network and the Chicago Bears. They've always been losers because they've never had this that they're about to get. So chase greatness and start understanding that he's going to make everybody. You think DJ Moore's good? Imagine what he's going to be like with a quick release. That stuff happens. So you can put any quarterback up there. Because I, I will make this one more time clear. Caden Whitlow, cut it. He is the best quarterback I have ever scouted on tape. So come, I've said this last year. I said it again this year with this supposed he regressed after Notre Dame. Shane destroyed that with stats. And we showed you the Notre Dame game live and the Washington game who, who went to the national championship. We showed you that game. He, he regressed. If that's regressing, sign me up. Because he can regress all over Soldier Field because every – NFC North team that plays him is going to hate the regression depression because it ain't Ryan Pace talking about it. It's, yeah, it, it's Caleb Williams that's coming crazy. out. It's going to be a parade. Let's get our Chicago speak, Bears. Speaking family. of parades, let's get our guy out here and really get into this because I had a couple combos yes. with him today and he was all sorts of fired up. I love <laughs> this guy. We don't have his intro. Because we're redoing all our intros, and we tried to get it ready, but I had all this drama today with the dogs. But still, not an excuse. So I'll do it naturally, Shane. You know this guy. He's a Hall of Fame broadcaster. So any of these clowns on his network, on other shows, talking smack about him, I get fired up. This man. He is probably... Where's all this music coming from? Yeah, I have no idea. Sorry about was messing that. Up your He's audio. probably the smartest guy, aside from Shane, on his network. He comes on every morning with him and Hoodie, and I honestly have, I just look forward to morning shows with him and Hoodie just speaking truth. They're authentic. They balance each other. It's almost like me and Shane. And... I enjoy it so much because he brings the truth. He brings a passion. He wears his heart on his sleeve and a knowledge, a former coach. And he shares and he wears stories. TTNL on his chest. He wears TTNL on his chest and he's a proud. He shouts us out all the time, authentically, almost like my guy, Adam Rank. The two walk together like they're not afraid. They're not putting their noses up like a McCaskey collecting a check. They are real, and I love them. Let's bring them out. The man, the myth, the legend. There he is. There we Dave. go. Look at him. There he is. There he, he is. Rocking the hoodie. That's it. I love this hoodie. Love it. I got to get Cap a, a hoodie that says, where'd you park the cop car, Dick fucking Dick Tracy? That was... <laughs> <laughs> I almost drove off the road when I got that. Oh voice man, today. I'm telling you what, this <laughs> this Justin cult, it's just uh Will Bond was on with Rich Eisen tonight mm -hmm. and said, and I'll quote it, Will Bond, who I love, Mike's a great dude. He said, 
It's the most divisive sports issue in the history of Chicago. Yeah. yeah it is. It, it, you're getting people that are threatening fights over this stuff. Like, do you think Justin cares about you? Like, it just cracks me up. Like, I have people here in New York that aren't even huge. They're definitely not Bears fans, but they're more college football driven and they know that I'm a Bears fan when they talk to me and they're like, man, you guys got to be, I'm like, yeah, we, we are excited. He's like, I can't imagine what the, the, you know, other Bears fans are like, and I'm like, it's civil war. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, it is civil war. Yeah. I, I said, had social I, media is toxic. Jer Jerry Hairston, who I like a lot played in the major leagues, Jerry Hairston jr. He broadcasts for the Dodgers. Now he has this podcast. So he reaches out, Hey brother, can you come on my podcast? I said, when Wednesday, I said, sorry, I'm doing your guy's show Wednesday night. He goes, no, I want to do it at two 30. Okay. I'll be glad to. <laughs> I go on and there's this guy Swifty on there. Oh God. <laughs> and it, it got heated. It got heated. And it's amazing to me. These people are all hanging out. You don't know that they're taking Caleb Williams. Okay. I'm not in Ryan Poles' house but I feel pretty comfortable. And then I said, Schefter says they are. Rich Eisen says they are. Uh, Jay Glazer says they are. Chris Sims says they are. Ian Rapport, he goes, ah, oh, what do those guys know? Yeah. Yeah, you I can't mean, that's win. What I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jay Glazer, the guy that was sitting down at a dinner with Ian Cunningham and Ryan, and Ryan Poles. And one and of the Ian. best insiders in the business ever, yeah. by the way. They don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. So it is what it is, man. This is not anti-Justin. He's a good person. He tried hard. Did he get a fair shake? No, he did not. Matt Nagy sent him out to the Wolves when he wasn't ready with a horrible game yeah. plan in Cleveland. The next year they tanked. And this year, they, he would say he's just not good enough. And they got a gift card. Hey, guess what, Shane? I bought you a gift card. And the gift yeah. card is you get that first fucking pick in the draft. <laughs> And there happens to be a really good quarterback. Yeah. Sorry, Justin. Yeah. But, but you know what, Cap? I, I might have to keep that gift card to see if I can get some more gift cards with it, right? I'm not right. going to cash it in. <laughs> You're going to go over to my neighbor, Jordan, over here, and you go, hey, Jordan, do you and your wife, Lauren, I'll give you this gift card. You give me those eight gift cards you got yeah, over there. Yeah, None right. of them are as good as the gift card you have, right. but yeah. it's insane. Well, it goes back to this, Cap, and it's unfortunate because what you're saying is true to to an extent, you know, 100% Nagy. That's on the Bears. They should have fired Nagy and kept Pace or let Pace go and allow they the next to guy to pick the quarterback in that draft there. They did, they did this again this year. They didn't let Eberflus go, and now we're at that same – point with the gift card to your credit but that was what they did with trubisky as well with fox and then Nagy had to keep him a lovey smith same thing they followed this same pattern no right? go all the way back to jay cutler you trade yep. for jay cutler do you give him a number one receiver no you give him devin hester he's not a number <laughs> one receiver you give him johnny knox do you fix right. your offensive line issues no you do not so I wonder why he struggles. And he's got 19 different offensive coordinators. And I'm no Jay Cutler guy, believe me. But he every year, it's a different, Jeremy Bates to Adam Gase to Mike Tice to Mike Martz to Ron Turner. Like, insanity. Okay, yeah, get him out of here. Now let's bring Trubisky in. And the day of the draft, Ryan Pace says to us, I was covering it. Yeah. we There is no scenario that Mitch is playing as a rookie. He's going to sit. He only played 13 games at, at uh, North Carolina. He is sitting. Mike Glennon is going to be our quarterback. We're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. Anyway, we'll just let him play. Oh, till John Fox says in week five, Mike Glennon sucks. Get Trubisky <laughs> in there. Oh, what happened to the plan of developing him? Now we fire a year later, John Fox. Get out. Bring Nagy in. Now we're pairing him with a quarterback he didn't draft. Now we do the same thing again. Right? Yep. Yep. So doing it again. Well, this is where I push back now. 
Like Cutler had talent, but he wasn't. He was a dick. It's what he, he was. was he was. He was. I yeah. still remember Cap. I'll tell a story like you, me and my father, because my uncle Sam Ritigliano was the head coach of the Browns. He invites us to Cleveland. He's like, I know Philip loves the Bears. Why don't I fly? You guys could stay at my house for the weekend. I'll bring you to Browns versus Bears. It's a preseason game. Mm -hmm. And we go there to the game. And uh, my father's buddy, George DeLeon, God bless, rest in peace. Coach DeLeon was there and he brought us down onto the field. And we're going over there. And um, my father's standing with me and the Bears are coming out of the tunnel to warm up. And all these little kids are there, Bears fans. We're on the Bears side. And they're, Jay Cutler, Jay, Jay, Jay. He runs by them all. And he's he's running. My father's, you know, at that time, I think he's like 70-something, whatever it was. And he he's running by the kids. And me and my dad are right there on the sideline. And Peanut Tillman is right here with us. And Jay Cutler, like, spits over to the side of where the kids are asking almost like a non-verbal fuck you and my father set, turns to me he's talented but i'm telling you right now he'll never win you'll never win with that guy it's That's right. he, ne he never lets go of that story either and he was right That's can't right. be like that you can't be like percent that. right can't be like that but yeah. this kid though is being labeled like that, Cap. And you have talked to your people. I have talked to my people. And all of it is bullshit. Correct. Bullshit. Correct. And the amazing thing is, I'm dealing with these guys today, and they're like, how do you know he's a good guy? How do you know he doesn't want to hold out in training camp and circumvent the CBA? How do you know he doesn't want ownership? How do you know? That? I'm like, are you guys that stupid? I mean, really? Did they what not listen Ryan, to Ryan us? Ryan Pace comes from, I mean, Ryan Poles comes from the right. Chiefs. Do you think he's not doing all his homework on all this? Come on now. It's the entire reason he doesn't have an agent right now, Cap, because they Correct. can't circumvent it. That's the whole point. That was Correct. the the rumor was out there that he was interviewing agents, and that was the thing, that they were legitimately talking about that, and they're like, no, it's locked up tight. It's not going to be a thing. And the, the money is already known what he's going to get at number right. one overall. It, 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 it's not going to be negotiated. There's none of that. Totally. And even a, even totally. according to uh, who was – oh, it was Lawrence Holmes talked about it, saying that he – part of his camp is a former NFL agent, is part of his team, a former big-time NFL agent. And – Lawrence Holmes vouched for for that guy, the agent. He's not a Caleb fan himself. Lawrence isn't actually doubled and tripled down that he was going to be under six feet tall. That didn't work out very well for Lawrence, but no, <laughs> <laughs> never apologize for like, oh shit, I was wrong. Well, how about Greg Gabriel, who should oh, know my. better? Greg Gabriel. Say what you want, because I think some of his nonsense on Twitter is embarrassing. I would tell him that if he ever asked me. He doesn't uh, care. You're a 72-year-old man with a 28-year resume in the National Football League. What are you doing acting like a jackass on Twitter? Okay, that's his business. He wants to do that. God bless him. He has been double tripling down and then offering to bet his pension that they won't draft Caleb Williams till today. Now he's <laughs> saying... I don't agree with it, but they're going to do it. But what I don't, what I don't understand, and maybe I'm just not seeing the entire picture. Just when you're, you know, talking about Greg here, Cap, is that according to him, he has information that isn't good about Caleb Williams. But if you keep on repeating that 35, 40, 50 times over the past, you know, eight to ten weeks. At what point do you not just have to come out and say what your information is? What's the upside or the downside for him to share the information to share or not share the information? That's what I don't I don't understand because all of these red flags that have been coming up for Caleb Williams along the way have all been knocked over. 
You know, yeah, the kid's so- a diva. He doesn't love football. He's a bad teammate. He's under six foot. All of the, you know, just one after another, after he another, can't throw after from another. the pocket. Can't he throw doesn't throw a structure. Right. He doesn't just have an NFL arm. <laughs> okay, so if if he was running our scouting, our uh, college scouting director, that's what his title was. Yes. And, yeah. and he can't put the tape on and tell you that this kid can play? Now well, he's, he's saying, well, talent-wise, he's the best, but it's all the off the field. He hasn't done any homework on that. He's not connected like that anymore. Who's he talking to? Yeah, Didn't that's... he say Harbaugh was a bad coach too? Someone sent me that. And that just, like, there's two things you can't say to me. One, you could say Harbaugh is a weirdo. You could, you know, all that. You that cannot is. say he's not a good football coach that's well, number one Well, there's no scenario where you could say he's not a good coach because everywhere he goes he wins exactly and number two you can't say caleb williams tape isn't the most impressive thing you've seen my father he's like i'm 83 i don't get to stay up so he saw it for the first time with me and shane we did a two and a half hour show of his usc tape his senior year we skipped the heisman year I'm like i don't want to we're not going to manipulate let's watch the scene where he supposedly were my dad's like are you kidding this is like a a two-hour highlight film of you showing look at his footwork it's on another left he's stepping up square in the pocket like marino his arm is perfect he's throwing from all the different angles that are required now in this spread rpo kind of philosophy mixed in with that west coast you're gonna have to do it he's the closest thing to aaron Rodgers and patrick mahomes it's it's just there on tape all the time so it it was just the easiest layup for me once we got the first we're taking caleb williams that's it there's no other choice unless you want to continue to be living in mediocrity which you have been and and I thank you so much, Cap. Seriously. We wanted to have you on because a lot of these shows in Chicago, minus ESPN, have been tear down this kid at all costs and continue to get clicks and motivate this weird group of people that are holding on to a player, not the team, the player, and not seeing the big picture. And you've been a champion of the Chase Greatness campaign. Hashtag Chase Greatness. I tweeted something today, and I tonight, and I t- has hashtag Chase Greatness, hashtag take that. Like, I don't understand. Like I said to these guys this afternoon, he's the fourth best quarterback in the division if Kirk Cousins yep. is still in Minnesota. Why do you guys settle for mediocrity? That's actually embarrassing. They didn't have an answer. You don't because know that Caleb's going to be good. No, I don't. Caleb could bust, but I do know I'd rather have him than have Justin knowing in his fourth year, he's probably not good enough. Yeah. Hey, you want to know what the kill shot is? Put them both in the draft, both available. Justin and Caleb oh. Williams. And give them the same rookie contract? It's not yeah. even a comparison. Right. Exactly. Exactly. The other the other mic drop is I've been around this game a long time, Cap. And Shane and I off the air talked like, what could this football player, uh, Justin Fields, garner in a trade market? I'm like in watching the tape of him. He's mediocre, mediocre. He is. So how is someone going to see? And there's always one coach that thinks they're going to fix it so what are they going to get for it and sure enough oh they'll get first round pick he's the shit he's so good you don't know what you're talking about i'm like okay and and there were moments i took it personally because i'm like you think i'm gonna not support a guy that i feel like's ascending and is showing this on tape all of it that i watch at this network that the name right. of the network is the Tape Never Lies Network. We're not That's what I love. That's why I hey, shout you hey, out all the time. Real we quick, Cap, it. I want you to comment on a picture. And this is okay. this is a brand new picture live from the Marquette game. 
college basketball game. Tell me what you think of this picture up here. Wait, hold on a minute. I got to. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Uh oh, Cap. Tonight? Yeah, it's tonight. That's tonight's game? Yep. Okay, let me ask you a question. And I like the beard, <laughs> the whole deal. I've got one. Which coach are you hiring of those two guys if you didn't know who they were? Which one just looks like? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, listen, it's, it's hard because you know the, the track record. I'm, I'm, I'm defaulting to the guy with, with quarterback success with a, a young quarterback. And that's, who's, that is who, so funny. Who's taking, who's taking Justin Fields over Jordan Love right now? Nobody. That's, Right. Okay, so I figured while I'm with you guys, tell me the spot. And I asked these guys this afternoon, and none of them yeah. could come up with an answer. Tell me the spot that is they're going to absolutely try and get Justin, and he's an upgrade over what they already have. And if you tell me New England, okay, he's an upgrade over what they got, but they have the third pick. So they're going to take a quarterback as opposed to Justin, I would think. Give me the landing spot. Yeah, it's a, it's a short list. Like you said, New England. I think he would walk if they if they don't get Cousins. I think he walks into Atlanta and is the clear cut starter over what yeah, they have. Probably. All day. Me, I would. I think if they traded for him, Pittsburgh is very patient. I understand that. Yeah. I'm just basing this on me. I would take Justin Fields over Kenny Pickett all day. And obviously okay. they moved they moved on from Mitch, who is now officially a Buffalo Bill, by the way, back in yep. Buffalo as a yep. backup. But uh the, in Buffalo. Yeah, the 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 list is it's the short. list isn't impressive. And then we did this exercise, and I know I shared it with you, Cap. We said, okay, let's go down the whole draft out of all these teams who would draft Caleb Williams right now. And it was 20. Two out of the 32 or 24 out of the 32 that right. would move on from their quarterback and draft New Orleans, all of them would move on. But somehow, some way, the Chicago Bears can't fan base, not all of them. We have some smart fans on our show, and I'm sure you do too. But, you know, uh, what's his name? Derek from Brooklyn. Yeah. That calls in. He He gets it. But he's an East Coaster like we are, I guess. I, I think the East Coast fans understand, like, you need an upgrade at quarterback ASAP. And I don't think the Bears fans really appreciate and realize that Caleb took a team without any first-round talent. Something Justin Fields can't say. Joe Burrow can't say. None of them could say and he went out there and won eight games with them and brought these games that his defense is letting up 41 points and average and he's having to play hero ball Correct. he's having to do certain things that maybe he wouldn't do had it not been to try to win in a team game you owe it to that and he actually goes out there to do it he's not playing Georgia Southern Army and what was the other team, Shane? At LSU. It's Georgia Southern Army and Grambling. And Grambling. 34% of his 50 touchdowns, 50 total touchdowns, 34% were against those teams. Caleb Williams was taken out of three games at halftime to not pad his stats against Nevada. I'm sorry, in the third quarter, he went out against, I forget, Stanford. Stanford he yeah. took him out in Stanford in the third quarter when he had five touchdown passes. He could have kept him in there, thrown but, eight. But oh, so let's talk the, about, about the, the Heisman. Easy, the easy thing is just you can talk about LSU, and guess what? Neighbors and Brian yeah. Thomas Jr. both going in round one. First round. Right? Yeah. So that's the thing. But back to back to USC. You mm -hmm. can yes. speak to this as a coach, and we've talked about it a hundred times at this point. When you, I always kind of laugh. I understand the hero ball thing. And sometimes, you know, you want to live to fight another down and take the check mm -hmm. down. But every time that you're out there, you realize that you have to 
get you have points no, no matter what because your defense is giving up points every single series. And Caleb, if you come to play USC, everybody on defense, everybody on that coaching staff yes. makes Caleb Williams the shining beacon. We have to stop this guy. Our defense is geared against the pass to stop this guy. We stopped Caleb Williams. And he still went out and produced. Still. Week he, in and week out. Well, his ability to shuffle and slide in the pocket and deliver an on-time dart is yeah. super impressive. We don't have that. We've never had that. We've we never, never had. had. You could go down the list. Someone could give us a list of the 40-plus quarterbacks we've had since Jim McMahon. And you can honestly ask what coach was going to help that quarterback. It's it's not always about that. I, I always laugh. They're not they're not developing them. They're not the they're in the NFL. Yes, there's some development that needs to, to occur in uh absorbing the playbook, working on your footwork, understanding coverages. That is the development. You can't hold their hand. At some point, they have to do the work to get it. And watching Justin Fields, it's below average understanding of intermediate and outside throws. I'm talking towards the sideline flags. He won't throw in, it over the middle. Very rare. He's, he's afraid because he can't anticipate like you're saying, Cap. And I love you for it because you're saying I'm listening to Waddle and I feel like he's taking a political, he doesn't want to ruffle any feathers. Like let's talk about the free agent, uh, excuse me, the trade Ryan Poles made. Let's look at this. Honestly, let's look at their scouting staff. Identified this guy two years ago. Correct. Bates. They gave him a big contract that Buffalo matched their identifier then. And I know this to be true was he's going to be our starting center. Okay. They Buffalo matched it. They moved on to what Lucas Patrick or whatever they did at that Correct. point. Right. Correct. Lucas Patrick. We know got hurt, blah, blah, blah. He stunk before him. Mustafa terrible. Sorry, Olin. But he was. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what I saw. Right. The center position has been putrid. So now we go to this year, and the Bears trade a fifth round pick for a guy they've identified as a starting center. That is where their belief is. So now but, we but, get to see I, he's going to be your starting this, center. But this you is can't the have thing, a rookie so, with and, Caleb. At this center. is where you have to remove. Your, your coaching glasses and everything. And this is where you and I work very, very well. You're looking at mostly everything through the lens of a coach. And that's yeah. fantastic. And you know my outlook on it. I'm looking the at it from a GN per perspective. The Bears have two first rounders. They have a third rounder and two fourth rounders. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So guess what just happened? You gave up a fifth round draft pick potentially for your starting center and also a guy that can start at two other spots on the interior of your line. But guess what? Wait, there's more. Yeah. Just because he's on your roster, if a big time center falls to you in the draft, he Ryan Bates does not prevent you from drafting them. Agree. And that's what's important. You have limited draft capital as we speak today. What came out today? Jason McKee talked to his agent and there's mutual interest between Josh Jacobs and the Chicago bears. Now, why is that? You say we have a ton of money yes. and we have limited draft capital. So what does that mean? Everybody <laughs> the entire time has been preaching. You got to reset the financial clock at quarterback. And this is why you go out and you sign Josh J, I don't give a shit if it's a running back. You give Caleb Williams another weapon. 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 You go out yes. if it's Josh Jacobs, if it's Saquon Barkley, 
whoever it is, it, all the running, but you don't pay running backs. N- none of these guys are getting exorbitant contracts at, at running. They're back. not. That's correct. But the the listen, I there's guys, there's running backs in the draft that I love. You go out and you sign Josh Jacobs. It's another position you don't have to draft with limited draft capital. So you can go get him another wide receiver. You can go get him another tight end. You can go get him another offensive lineman in the draft that falls into your lap. That that this is what you do. This is why you do this. And it, it's so then you have Josh Jacobs and Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert. Is that a fucking upgrade from last year? Yes. Yeah. It's Hell not even is. close. Weapons. How would you guys feel if you heard the commissioner go, Chicago takes Caleb Williams, and then we get to like pick five? Chicago Bears have made a trade and they're moving up because JJ McCarthy slid in at four. Yeah. So four quarterbacks went. Chicago <laughs> goes to Harbaugh. All right, give us the pick. Here you go. And they so, get Marvin freaking Harrison. Shane and I were fantasizing yeah. about that on the phone. Well, here's, today. The, here's the thing <laughs> I don't have enough of a. Uh, gap between Marvin Harrison and Malik neighbors to to actually do it myself but but here's the caveat I 100% cap feel like that's in play for Ryan Poles that'd be amazing although I really I do the Bears love Malik neighbors Malik neighbors Adunze and Harrison Jr. are I've been told more than once that the whole Marvin to Arizona thing is a fallacy. They are a hundred percent waiting to for trade? a team like Minnesota to come up to number four to take JJ McCarthy. And then for the first time in NFL draft history, it's going to go quarterback, 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 quarterback. Wow. And, and word is the, the best one. By word, the is that, word is that the Chargers want to bounce out also. So that opens up the that door. And, and let's not forget, you have those. You have some ammunition. You have Carolina's second rounder in 2025 also. I think when it comes right down to it, if I think I have a legitimate shot at Neighbors or a Dunze, I, I don't think myself I would do it. I just have this sneaky suspicion that Ryan Poles is looking at what Houston did last year with the quarterback and the defensive end. And I think his answer is I'm going to come out of this first round with limited with draft capital with the Caleb two best Williams. players available in the draft. I think that's in play for Ryan Poles. <laughs> I really feel that. Can you imagine that if you go DJ Moore, Marvin Harrison, or neighbors or Dunze? Oh man. And you have I'm, Josh Jacobs or Saquon Barkley back there. Oh my God. Now you're cooking with gas. We've right never there. had anything freaking like that. No. No. We had the greatest running back ever. And Jim McMahon was good. Not great. He was always banged up. And my late father went to, was in uh the army with Forrest Gregg. That was who he yes. bunked with in the platoon. And my really? dad. One of his best friends, one of the la- the last, I think the last interview the guy ever did before he died, my dad, who was a lawyer, he booked an interview for me. He goes, hey, I got you an interview. I'm like, you're a lawyer. Who'd you get for me? He said, Sid Luckman's coming on your show tomorrow night. Oh, Dude, wow. I interviewed Sid freaking Luckman. Yes. Sid, the best ever that we've ever had. That's 80 years ago. That's what I'm <laughs> trying to say. This is my this is the best quarterback when he gets drafted and walks through the doors at Hallis Hall, he becomes the best quarterback the Chicago Bears talent wise have ever had. And Dude, you have never the, had that. Who was it? Was it um was it Jake Glazer? Who was it that said he advised the Williams family? Glazer. Go to, and it was Glazer. Chicago's the greatest situation for you. The team's on its way up. He said, if you go there and play like you think you can, they're going to build a, a, they're going to name a tunnel for you. They're going to name a bridge for you. Yeah. And they're going to build a statue for you. Yes. That's the truth. And Cap, it's we've talked truth. about this and people have told me that I'm crazy. And I think you and I had a conversation on the phone about this, like maybe six weeks ago. 
if he hits and he wins here, Cap, the conversation starts with Michael Jordan, and then it goes to Caleb Williams. Yeah. Um, Walter Payton's right in there. Yeah. Thank so you, you go, Cap. Michael, Walter, Caleb Williams is on your Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Right. If you imagine, just think of this. And I know it's a pro a projection, but you look at what Mahomes has done in Kansas City, and then you just close your eyes for a moment and you imagine the possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen. We're just talking about talent. That's all you can go on. The character stuff, the boxes have all been checked, and we'll talk about that. But just imagine, if you will, if you get what I believe you're going to get from him and you go and win back-to-back -back Super Bowls in Chicago. Oh, my goodness. Ser seriously, think about for that, because this is, we've always said, this is a quarterback-driven league. This is a passing league. So does the cult just fold their tent up? That's my no. question. No, because this they're going to is... fake it and go, I'm all in on Caleb. Now no. that's what they're doing. <laughs> There's a built-in <laughs> exit plan. And this is the thing. I saw somebody in the chat saying, why are you calling a play of, uh, you know, we're a fan of a player on our team. Why are you calling us a cult? We, listen, we're doing it to be smarmy bitches because everybody's saying the same thing about the Caleb cult. It works both ways. So, yeah, Correct. we can play that's the That's why I throw it back right. at Right. We can play the game, too. But here's their exit plan, Cap. It's, oh, no matter what happens, I believe in what Ryan Poles is doing. So that's their escape plan. That's their escape plan. Oh, yeah. That is the verbiage of escape. Yeah. Uh, so the um, night. It's like hilarious. I told you. No, we've seen all your uh, graphic ripping of Caleb Williams. So you don't trust Ryan Poles. Like, th that shit doesn't work at TTNL. Certainly now, doesn't work do? with Kaplan either. They trust Ryan Poles, except for the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that nonsense today. Um, I'm a Bears fan, so I'm going to root for whoever's the quarterback. No, you've been firing on Shane, Cap, and Phil because you are <laughs> members of the Justin cult. Go be a fan of where Justin goes then. That's fine. But Cap, you know what's going to happen, and it's going to be true. And listen, I've fallen into this trap. Cap, did you love Dennis Rodman when he played for the Pistons? I hated that. Movie. Exactly. You know, you know my, you know where I'm going with this, then, right? <laughs> yeah, it's well, going to happen. Came ours. Yeah, That's our guy. You ain't talking bad about my guy, right? Exactly. <laughs> when he goes out and throws for three twenty-five and four touchdowns in Week One, he's going to every he's going to be universally adored. That's that's why fan is short for fanatic. You know, it's it's the way that it works. And people are people are dug in. And unfortunately, you know what's gonna happen. He's gonna get booed anyway, even if he, I don't know. Do you guys expect him to go to the draft? You think he's gonna show up? I know oh, he's yeah. a different that's a great question. He I think to. he has to. I think he has to too. And I think he would listen. I, I just love the I doesn't. love the fact that it's in Detroit and <laughs> the Bears have the number one pick. And he's going to go up there because you know what? He's the type of kid that's going to, it's going to be like a, one of those defining moments where he's like, all right, this is, I'm going to, this team right here, you write that shit down. You make a mental note of it. This is Detroit. I'm going to come here once a year. You know what I mean? You want to boo me now? You're going to be booing me a lot more later when I walk off this field with a W with my that team. That would be amazing me. if he said that. Yeah. Oh my that god. That's amazing. how he's that's how he's built, Cap. You can hear it. And like I have you heard one just one single teammate even allude a little bit that this guy is an asshole teammate. No, but that's the way he's been painted. Correct. You're correct. Now, he that's what I wanted to check off these boxes here. He goes to the combine, Lawrence Holmes. He needs He's gonna to be get up on the stage on draft night, Phil, and say, I'd boo me too, because <laughs> shit's about to change. Detroit. Well, me and Cap were in a text thread when the quote came out when he was asked, Do you have any questions when you go to the Chicago Bears? And he goes, Yeah. Do you want to win? That's right. 
I love that's it. the mic drop. That's that's every coach's dream. Yeah. He believes in himself. Those same fans that are against him can't hear that mm -hmm. as a confidence that breeds success. That's what that is. It's Michael Jordan is the same. It's built. Walter Payton was built. Uh, one of my buddies is a historian. He goes, ask your Chicago fan base if they remember 1975 when Walter Payton was asked, what do you think about yeah. Chicago? And he goes, well, I'm here to help them forget Gail Sayers. Yeah. Does that confidence... That's what he did, by the way. Somebody yep. called in this past Saturday to, to uh, Peggy and Dion and yeah. brought that up. And, yeah. and Peggy Kaczynski's like, are you – he really said that? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've read that quote. And like, he 100% did. This, this Love guy's it. a historian, I too. I just don't think people have an idea yet. They know there's this argument going. I don't think they have a real idea of what the hell's about to hit this town. I, I don't think so either, Cap. Well, they've they're not used to it, Cap. Like I said, it's you go back to the, they drafted Cade McDown, and every, everybody's like, "Well, um, DJ Moore had a great year. You just got to give him more weapons." Well, Marcus Robinson put up fourteen hundred yards with Cade McDown and Jim Miller. Was the answer getting them more weapons? No, they just weren't good enough. So I went to the Bears Packers game yeah, in Green point. Bay. I've never been to Lambeau yeah. to this year. My wife and I and the CEO of her company and his wife, who were dear friends, we go to the game. And I'm like, who the fuck is Bo Melton? <laughs> and yeah. they, they throw throwing away from Rutgers. Like, Hang on a minute, Mindy. Give me my phone. I got to look this up. Who is that dude? And he is dicing us up. Yeah. And I keep hearing, well, we need to get two more offensive linemen, a new running back, another 1A <laughs> receiver, another receiver. Like, really? Yeah, we got to be Ohio State, Cap. We got to get a bunch of five stars in here. Get a bunch again, of five stars. A, and people think, why are you a hater of Justin? I'm not. He's a good person. I just am chasing greatness. Got to chase greatness. Hashtag that up. Chase greatness. Doyle Collette, $20. You know, I got to show love to TTNL. Stoked I made it. Doyle Collette, way to go, man. Love you guys. He loves Cap. Thank you for keeping the sanity in Bears land. Love you all, TT. Now keeping up, Robert Nash. Oh man, we can. Uh, I had a question for you, Cap. You know, Bring it on. I. You want to talk you can about buy one of these sweat cool sweatshirts, don't you? Yeah. TTNLSwag.com. TTNLSwag.com. Look Are at you. Are you serious? Cap. Yeah. Yes. Is that what That's it's called? TTNLSwag.com? Dot com. That's oh, yeah. where you get the swag from. All there the hoodies go. and we gotta get yeah, hood. We start, we're just gay hood a hoodie. On my website, thecapman.com. So yeah, yeah, right I gotta there catch at the up bottom of the screen, again. Cap. TTNLSwag.com. I love it. I thank you for shouting us out all the time. Cap brought up a name, Shane, that you know is near and dear to me on his show the past yeah. month, I'll say. Uh and I want to hear your thoughts on this, Shane, because I would love this name, too. If those receivers go off the board, Gabe Davis. Yeah. Um, for, yeah. I think he's, he's the perfect. He, the trap that we cannot fall into is guess what? Gabe Davis is a number three wide receiver, and that's just fine. That's fine. Yes. Darnell Mooney came out and had a nice year, and we went through this debate. Everybody, oh, why, he's a wide receiver one. No, he's not. Darnell Mooney was never a wide receiver one. He's a wide receiver three on a good team, and that's fine. We need that. Gabe Davis, sign me up for wide receiver three. That pushes Tyler Scott down. That's fine. You got to find – you can't put him in the role of wide receiver two. Can't. You know what I mean? No. You, you, you got to get Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors in that role. Yeah, you bring in a Dunze or Neighbors with Gabe Davis and DJ Moore. Yeah, now you're now you're talking big boy football. Welcome. Now to you're Chicago, a serious finally. football team. Yes, exactly. Listen, I don't even need to put a number. Big play Gabe makes big plays in big moments. He does. He will drive you. There, there will be a game when big play Gabe is open by 
32 yards running down the field. Caleb hits him in stride. He kicks the ball 15 yards downfield when it It goes through the wickets. But, yeah, it happens. Doyle Colette, five dollars. One of the most impressive things about Caleb Williams is he carried a subpar USC team to an eight and five record. USC has no day. Exactly what I was saying earlier, Doyle. I appreciate your your patron. So, uh, real, real how about quick. this? Brags in the stands, two dollars. You can't pay more than that. PHGO ain't paying him enough. If you're going to pony paying him enough. Bucks God, over Bragg, there, Bragg. better than that, man. Two dollar <laughs> tip. Well, God, he paid for some drinks at the combine, so Jenny's got him on a budget. <laughs> hey, Braggs looks good, man. Braggs, he does. he's working hard. He Dro- does. Dropped some weight. He looks good. I'm proud of that guy. Yeah. You know what? The only thing I got to complain about Greg is like if I call and I'm talking to Cap, we're having a conversation. If I call and talk to Shane, we're having a conversation. If I, he's Chris Zorich and I were having a conversation tonight. Greg is tweeting while he's talking. He's not even paying attention to us. I'm like, oh, Mr. Big Time now. Mr. Big Time's in a fight. I had a with- conversation with him. He's got to learn to I have a tattoo right here. It says tune out the matote. That's yeah, the yeah. thousand voices in your head. Don't listen to the fucking idiots on Twitter. That's where idiots go to play. I mean, what the hell, Greg? <laughs> Come on, Greg. Up your game, two dollars. What is this? Better off dead. He wants his two dollars. But so, real quick, before I love forget you, Bragg, we, we talked about you, Marvin Bragg. Harrison, and the reason that I think, listen, he's a fantastic player. But the reason why I think this could be in play, and I'm a believer in all of this. You know, there's going to be some. It, it's not going to. It's not going to drive. It's not going to make decisions. But the the locker room, once they trade Justin, there's going to be a thing there. But Marvin Harrison is very, very close friends with who? And grew up with who? Does anybody know? Caleb the guy's Williams. name is DJ Moore. Oh, DJ the wide receiver oh, really? in Chicago. Yes. Because I know neighbors and Caleb are very close, too. Neighbor, yeah. Neighbors and Caleb, those are boys. They text they, all the time. They're texting all the time. So... I I don't know. I it's exciting. Odunze, you saw the hug. They're getting close together. Yeah. So Caleb might be. Listen, I don't even know how I'm gonna react when I see the commissioner come in. Uh welcome to Detroit. Dude, our hearts are gonna be racing, even though we get it, we're gonna know what's happening oh, yeah. when he walks up. Oh my god, with the first pick in the 2024 NFL draft, Chicago Bears select. Kayla Williams, quarterback, USC. Dude, dude I'm gonna go ballistic. It's insane. It's gonna be insane. It's gonna be insane. And it should be because the first time in the history of the Bears, they're gonna have that. I'm stealing this from that analyst, that Red Bull at quarterback, the freaking guy that doesn't quit. He's just going to continue to battle and work his way up the field. For your Chicago Bears. The next question, will he be wearing number 13, Cap? Will he wear that number? No, I was talking about that with Shane today. Yeah, Were you? I didn't even know. Dude, I called you too after I got done talking to Shane. Write the freaking voicemail, pay no minus. My (laughs) phone died. I was in the vet all day, bro. It was like a tragedy. I got the dog with the thing on its head now. Oh, the cone? Or the yeah. Cone. It's he's the dog is done with all of the outside noise too. The dog's ready for Caleb. He he just tuning out. <laughs> yeah, so my we dog have, is ready for Caleb. So, so I, my wife right now is in Africa. Yeah. Yes. She climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. It's amazing. And she reached the summit yesterday. Pretty insane. Wow. Yeah. With two of my three of my boys went and my sister in law. And Two of my boys, my wife and my sister-in-law, made it. One of my sons got altitude sickness, and they went, you're out, and they took him yeah. off the mountain. Really? But, yeah. I thought He called me in the middle of the night. I'm feeling a lot better now. He goes, it was hell. I'm like, not my jam, man. That's why no, I didn't go. Me either. Were, no you able, didn't do it. were you able to hook up with the long boys about that? I know you and I had the... I did. Oh, and so excellent. Chris sent my wife, Mindy, a message before she left. 
Yeah. A video message. Hey, Chris. Hey, Mindy, it's Chris. David told Kyle, you're going up to Killy tomorrow. Here's some tips. He could not have been a better yeah. guy. He and Kyle, I love those long guys. Well, I'm they glad we hooked up about that because it was so weird when you called me. I had just listened to that episode of the podcast that same day. And he's like, well, my wife, my wife's leaving this weekend. Yeah. For there. So it was awesome. incredible. So Shane told me. So I reached out to Kyle. Next thing I know, there's a video from Chris. Super <laughs> freaking cool. I think he's done it like what five times, right? Didn't five he say times. That or... he yeah, even took amazing. Jason Kelsey with him uh one yeah. time and some other guy that played for the Eagles. But what my point of the, the whole thing was Bo Allen was the other guy. Bo Allen was the yep. other guy. So and he played for the Eagles, right? Yes, he was drafted by the Eagles. So and, and Kansas City. So I have two dogs. We lost one back in August. My guy Yoshi died before he, he would have been 16 in December. So I have oh. Sparky, who's a Siberian Husky, and Stanley, who is a rescue from, he's a black lab mix. And they oh, were nice. running around up at our lake house in Wisconsin last summer, last May. And Sparky is an amazing athlete. And he Stanley body blocked him and Sparky blew out his ACL. Holy shit. Yeah, he's limping around. And we're like, oh, he must have something stuck in his paw. And you touched his leg. That dog was pissed. So I took him like end of July, beginning of August. He's still limping. I take him into the doctor. He's like, um, you've got a complete knee reconstruction here. Tore the MCL, the AC, like just like he's a running back. He's playing on the old <laughs> turf at Soldier. How much do you think that surgery was? Oh, I can only imagine. 6,500. Yeah. Plus Holy all the follow-up appointments. It was easy, eight grand. And he had to sleep in the kitchen with a cone on his head for 12 freaking weeks. Dude, it was a oh, nightmare. 12 dog. weeks. Nightmare. Yikes. We oh. got about eight weeks into it, and I started picking him up. And he's 80 pounds and carrying yeah. him up two flights of stairs and laying him <laughs> on our bed. Oh, my I God. I had to, Tonight, it's pouring out. I don't know if you can hear the rain hitting on the roof here. but. Uh, I had to bring the dog around because me and Steph have our own like suite in our ba our we redid our basement. Like the dog could not go down the stairs to your point with that cone. So I had to right. walk her around, go through the back door, lay her down. It it's tough. It's tough, but yeah, the dog is the greatest man. Oh, the, the best. Absolutely. Now I would tell everybody and their brother. Get pet insurance because oh. right now my freaking pocket. Yeah, we, we don't have that either. That's a booming like, business, man. What kind of dogs? What kind of dogs does Justin Fields have? I thought he had like a little I know French his name is bulldog. French yeah. bulldogs. That's what he's right, got. Yeah. So does Tom Thayer. So they bonded over French bulldogs. Look, he's a really good person, Justin. It's just not yes. going to work here. That's it. That's all it is yeah. to it. Now, it's when you look time. at this. When you look at this team, Cap, I know that you've had some conversations with people up there. Uh, where other than quarterback and receiver are the Bears inclined to look in this free agency? Are we going to see a big signing right out the gate? A Daniil Hunter as a pass rusher opposite uh, Montez Sweat. Where well, do you think I we're going there? Okay, so I know they love Danell Hunter, but the question is, are you going to get a long-term deal done with Jalen Johnson, or is he going to truly play under the tag? Because if he's playing on the tag, that's a $19.81 million hit, whereas if you do a long-term extension with him, you could spread stuff out and save a little bit of money. They love Danell Hunter. He's 29. What's not to love? But if I say right. you can have him, or you could have Chris Jones or Christian Wilkins, who are you taking? I'm probably taking the interior guy. I think they're more important in this right scheme. There. I honestly do because at the end of the day, you still have Montez Sweat outside. That's what Eberflus would tell you. Yeah. I'm a little more leery of giving interior guys the big money. I understand it. You got to have them. It's just there's not a real great track record and history of paying interior guys to, you are to correct. switch teams. That's, that's the point. Christian Wilkins being, I mean, Drew Rosenhaus is his agent. So, you know, it ain't going to be cheap. 
and it isn't going to be cheap anyway. He came out today and said that he fully expects Miami to be extremely aggressive, even with Wilkins. Once you know they're still talking to, mm-hmm. to, to bring him back, but if I'm pushing all of my you know worries aside, I think he's got to be the the top target cap. Christian Wilkins. Yes. Yeah, Danell Hunter would be a hell of a player yeah. too, man. But I'm just saying, if you add another dog on the inside, that makes Dexter better day one. It does. It makes Montez sweat better, and all of the investment that you made behind him in uh, Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards, av- adding another dog on the inside that. The talk about multipliers. I'm not saying that Daniil Hunter is not a great player. He is. He's great. Christian Wilkins, I think, is more of a multiplier because he's going to be doing the dirty work and he's going to be making the guys immediately better day one. It's, what do you do if Dallas Turner's sitting there at nine and there is no none of the top three receivers? Do you take Brock Bowers if he's there or do you take Dallas Turner? Dallas Turner is a freak, man. Yeah, I would. I would take Dallas Turner. I like Jared Verse over Dallas. Yeah, Turner. This is where Phil and I. Are. I like Verse. People say you that Phil and I J- agree J- too much. Dallas Turner's measurables. Like he can yeah. tie Bro, look at Jared Verse. Over. Yeah, he's look Will Anderson. J- yeah, Jared Verse has some great measurables too, and he's bigger. Yeah. Bigger. But yeah. I'm. I listen. It's like one A, one B. It's not but, like oh, so he's much better. I'm just telling you, I think Jared Verse is a fin- better finisher. You want Joe in Walt? The pass rush. I wouldn't I, pass him. I have him as my top. So as I my it, here's the game. One. Here's the game. First of all, that was great because yes, you're right. Interior, you're trying to improve over Justin Jones. Yeah. Which Wilkins does immediately. So Andrew there's Billings a, had a nice year, but he's not a star. But he's your nose. He's, he's gonna piece. yeah, he's gonna be a piece that's gonna hold the front front. He's gonna play that one technique, and then that's what his job is. You need that three technique that penetrate Wilkins gives you that. I believe Chris Jones is the best defensive lineman in football. So if you were to be able to get him. Oh, and God. Because he could play outside and inside, but he oh. would be – if he was playing a three – who, know, who knows about him better than Ryan Poles? <laughs> right. they got Chris Jones and Caleb Williams, and I don't even know how I would handle myself. So how about this people. story? Kuiper yeah. is on with Waddle and Sylvie, and mm-hmm. they're you know lamenting the pace passing on Mahomes and this and that. And – he said, guys, you got to get lucky in this business, too. You could sure. draft the right guy, and he gets hurt. He said, let me tell you a Kansas City Chiefs story. He said, at the draft, it was, I think, the year before. You can go back and look. I think it was the 16 draft. He claims, this is Kuiper, and he would know. He says the Chiefs think they've got a deal done to trade up to draft Paxton Lynch. Yeah. And Denver that, yeah. beats him by – making a better offer, they get him. He said, if they get Paxton Lynch, they don't use their pick that year on Chris freaking Jones. Yeah. He said, and if they don't, if there they get go. Paxton Lynch, they're never trading up to get Patrick Mahomes. He goes, all of a sudden, Andy Reid doesn't look so smart. That yeah. That is very true. Clip that clip because that – it changes the course yeah. of tides in regards to, you know, right. trades no, I, and I, players and just politics. Back. Because to your point, we've talked about this a lot with the Bears, especially under Ted Phillips. Again, we'll see with Kevin. But, oh, you drafted this guy second. We can't let him go. And I, I was listening to you today give polls credit because – he did the non Bears thing. He owned his mistake in trading for freaking what's his name? Uh, Clay Chase Pool Clay, that we call Chase, him on the show. Yeah. 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 Clay Chase, Chase Pool. Pool. But and you want to know what? Owned it. You, you want to do what, that in Cap? this game. You want to know win. what? If Jerry Angelo and those guys were still in charge, Clay Pool's still on this team. Correct. Because they did not have the temerity to go out and go, yep. hey, man, I fucked up. It's a bad pick. Right. 
Exactly. When I was scouting in the NBA, I worked for Donnie Walsh, who ran the Knicks and the Pacers. I was with him with the Pacers. And I remember him saying to me, and I was just young. He's like, if you ever get one of these jobs, if you make a mistake, fucking acknowledge it and move on. It. on. Yeah. He said, why Perfect. run a guy out there if he can't play? Hey, man, I fucked up. I took the wrong guy. He goes, you might have had the right reasoning. It just didn't work out. It would be like me going on your show and we do this show and the camera is this. You can't see me. Yeah. Well, I paid three grand for the fucking computer. I got to use it. No, <laughs> because you can't see me. Right. I Perfect. bought a bad computer. Sorry. I'll get a new one. Exactly. Sam yeah. Bertigliano said that same advice to me when I was young doing this and coaching and Tip, tipping my toes and scouting. He's like, listen, if you ever get to the point where you fucked up and it will happen, you acknowledge it and remove it right away. Say, we messed up. We did it wrong. This kid needs to be, you know, we move on from him. You don't continue to put that guy out there as if it's the Jets with Johnny Lamb Jones back in the day and so on and so wow, forth. Johnny Lamb Jones. <laughs> That's what they did, Cap. Are you but guys coming in for any games this year? Yeah, we have to. We, we have to with yeah. Caleb Williams, bro. We're going to have a I party. Think, I think we're doing our show in London wherever, whenever they play there. I think. I'm hoping. Are they going to? Because yeah, the morning off. show in go. Chicago is afternoon drive in London. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. So, so we'll see. Are you going to go? Yeah, we're going to have to do our show there. I love it. I love London. You've I've been, been there before. It's sensational. I've never been. I would have you ever been to, to be. Europe? No. Yeah. I've you never have been. Yeah, yeah my, my kids' parents are from Czech Republic, Prague. Oh, God. I want to go to Prague desperately. Yeah, I don't want to go there anymore, but yeah. <laughs> That's You've been reason. there a bunch, probably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I've been to Italy, Greece, yeah. Spain, Fr uh, France, Croatia, Finland. Yeah. Croatia is an amazing uh, vacation spot, man. I mean, Croatia's you talk about one of some of the favorite trips. One of the most beautiful beaches in the world is in, in Croatia. We one loved it. Things, we loved one, that. Greece was great. One of the things that I found out real quick in Prague is where they lived in like a suburb of Prague called Namiash Nahane. And at, at the end of every single street in this little town that they live in, there's a pub at both ends of every single street. And it doesn't matter if it's 7 a.m. or if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Those places are packed and people are in there drinking. That's Seven a days a week. Yeah, my wife swears by Spain, southern Spain, Sevilla. She's Sevilla. My old. son lived in Sevilla when he was studying over there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's what she did as well. She lives, she wants to bring us all there, but I've never been. And I have obvious, I have a lot of family over there uh, in Italy, Armenia, and uh, in Sweden. I have some Swedes, but anyway. Let's play a quick game and let you go. All right. Yeah, I got to get up. The Pacers, 424, baby. Exactly. I'm right there with you, Cap. I'm I got some kids. new. I got some new ink today too. Did oh, nice. you? Yeah. Are you, you want to reveal it? it? You want to reveal it or no? I'll reveal it. Oh, here we go. He's oh. taking off the shirt. If you're listening on a pod on the yeah. podcast version, down goes the TTNL sweatshirt it says right now. CWQB1. Hey. So. <laughs> I got a bunch that's all over. Yeah. Wow. Here. I didn't know you had this many tats. This was number eight today. Oh, wow. And it, all right. And you'll so have to read it to me. I, I was listening to a podcast. Clint Eastwood was in a golf tournament in 2017. He's like yeah. 93 years old now. It's amazing. He, he gets in the golf. It's his golf tournament. And his the celebrity riding with him is Toby Keith, who just died. Of stomach. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, and to and Toby Keith said, "You're in your 80s, man. What what what's up after the golf tournament?" He goes, "I three months. I got to film this movie I'm making." He said, "People in their late 80s are using walkers if they're alive. Where do you get this energy?" And he said, 
when I turned 60, I made a vow to myself. Don't let the old man in. And Toby yeah. Keith wrote that into a song and put yeah. it in Clint Eastwood's movie, The Mule. And oh, I heard wow. it. And I'm like, I'm 63. Okay. Guess you what? Great, bro. Appreciate it. Don't let the old man in. And that is written. I found a card. In fact, it's sitting over here somewhere. It was, I found it when I was cleaning out my house this week. My wife's uh -huh. been gone. I got a construction dumpster and I decluttered the house and threw a lot of her shit away that she'll never miss. And I found a card. It was a birthday card from my late mom. Oh, wow. And so this is her handwriting. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah cool they're well. able to take that. Is awesome. He takes it and he scans it. It goes into his like this iPad thing and he draws and he's like, all right, here we go. Bam. There it is. Dude, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. That's pretty dope that you did I can that. look at it every day and just go, hey, mom, don't let the old man in. That's it is awesome. amazing. My mom is 84 years old, Cap. And God bless. Like, Two years ago, I, I stopped in, and well, my son is 13 now, but this is a couple of years ago, and all of the grandkids were over there. She's got, what, two, four, six grandkids, um, and my mom was outside at 82 years old at the time playing kickball with the kids. God bless and her. I love you that. Would, you would never know, and I'm like, look at that. It's amazing. You know, my dad's sitting up. My dad sure as hell ain't doing it, but. My mom is out there at 82 years old playing kickball with 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 her grandkids, and it's age is all in your mind, man. Yep, that's, that's great. Where we are, my mom and dad both 83. My dad does the show with us, which yeah. is like a blessing beyond well, we that. Get him signed into Streamyard. If we can get it's a great them. time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a whole well, one day you got to get me on. I'd love to be I, on with him. Oh, I would love bad. that. He would love that because he loves you. He's got and one of the the all time drops. And give him the drop. You know this he is taught, right here. Set the stage before, so he's getting fired up because the Bears Will had Anderson. the first round yeah. pick last year, and this was his thoughts that Will Anderson would bring to the Chicago Bears. And he's like, if you want this kind of leader on your field, the guy that tells everybody this is how you work, and this is how you're gonna play. For our defense, the Chicago Bears. Go ahead. I'm gonna tell you shit in your hat and get the hell off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. Love Coach O. So if you're not hustling and you're not playing, he's gonna tell you to shit in your hat and get the hell off the field. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely. He's a Hall of Famer, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hall of Fame coach here. Yeah, always a spill up. He would be a hell of a middle linebacker. <laughs> he always would love it. The best. Uh, real quick, because I want you to go, and I so appreciate your time. We'll play just one, two, two rounds. It's if this happens. So the receiver is Odunze, Bowers, and Alt are there. Which one are you taking? Odunze. GM. I'm taking Odunze. Shane. What was the? Madunze, Bowers, and Alt are there. Although, Everyone what's my grade on Alt? Because for once in a lifetime, yeah. I'd like to also put a great fucking offensive line together. I am uh, this wide. Re this the wide receivers are deep in this class. In the, it's the I'm not getting. I'm not getting. Receiver. I'm not getting Joe Alt late later in this draft and. Listen, yeah, that's he, what I was gonna say. What's my grade on Joe? He's like Alt? 20 years old, former tight end. And when you when you see that, you think of Lane Johnson in Philly on the right side. If you can give me my bookends for the next 10 to 12 years with Caleb Williams, uh, man, I can not I can't pass that up. Here's the one concern it, about the O line. Yeah. Can you count on Tevin Jenkins? Talented, no, always no. hurt. Can yeah, you maybe. count on Nate Davis? No. Okay. It's That's why you trade for versatile offensive linemen that can play all three inside spots, Cap. That's exactly correct. And then I like Darnell Wright a lot. Braxton's okay. He's not terrible. He's okay. He's like Charles yeah. Leno. You know, okay. Have a exactly. long career. You tell me I put Joe Alt there or Fashanu or whoever the highest rated guy is on my board. Uh, if I can get him, let's talk about it. Yeah. I just... 
So Listen, you're and there, back. You're there's take not a all, bigger then, Notre like, Dame hater in the world than me. I fucking despise everything Notre Dame. Th- this guy <laughs> hates him more than you do. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> and Joe Joe All is absolutely legit. And He's I, legit. Yep, legit. His dad was a hell of a player, John yeah. All. Yep. Remember John All? Okay, last one. Let me play for the Chiefs, John Alt. He did. Yep. I could see that jersey and name. Big left tackle. Yeah, go we on. gotta have. We I gotta have about Cap, that. We gotta Holy have Cap. Shit. Yeah. Record a quick blurb to bust hoodies balls because he's coming on with us live next Wednesday night. Something oh, okay, that'll really yeah. get him irritated to be you like that it. fucker. I can't believe he did that live on air about me. You got it. Uh, what's the other question you had for me, Phil? All right, now we're gonna go same game. Now it's neighbors is there bowers and fasanu are there neighbors fashanu, olu fashanu olu fasanu neighbors yeah. and bowers the tight end i'm taking malik neighbors because yeah. i don't think the bears have the highest grade on olu fashanu is what i'm hearing really oh so yeah. that's my number one tackle i have him yeah. over caleb's ball. caleb's high school teammate by the way yeah yes Caleb you know, again, teammate. if you tell me that that's the high, I'm of the guy. I'm the guy that goes, who's the highest rated guy on my board? Oh, Jaquan <laughs> Brisker, take him. Yeah. Would you rather have Brisker or that fucking idiot George Pickens? I'll take yeah, right. Exactly. That's what we said. Yeah, Man. I have Marvin Harrison number one, but I don't have neighbors too far behind him. Cap, I so have both it of that- you would take neighbors there. Yes, that's the guy that Bears love. They love Malik Neighbors. Listen, Some, guys. Somebody told me that you can't take Malik Neighbors because he's too similar to DJ Moore. I'm like, well, sign me the fuck up, then. <laughs> I'll take another one. Oh, my one. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 3,000 exactly. yards between them. Aggressive yeah. after and before the catch is Neighbors. He's like a more physical uh, Victor Cruz type. He's just, <laughs> I love it. Tomato's got a question I know we've had about four times tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'll take Neighbors. Well, what was your thought on Courtney Cronin saying fuck live on air? That was so funny, he said. I just saw Cap's reaction. <laughs> Poor All right. They've asked us not to talk about oh, it. Oh. But I'll tell you this. She's the okay. greatest. She oh, is yeah. the greatest. Works she is her the best. ass off. I love Courtney Cronin. It happens. I've done it myself. I was working down the dial at another station, and I yeah. remember going, what the fuck? And <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, but there was no streaming then, so they could hit the dump right. button. Oh, my yes. God. My phone went off for a solid 20 minutes with that clip. Sent yeah. me the clip. <laughs> I sent. I was watching your show live when it happened. I sent it to, I believe, Shane and Ryan, and I sent it to Cap. I'm like, because your reaction was like, oh, my God. But anyway. I didn't yeah. know you couldn't talk about it. I apologize. Yeah. No, all good. She's a great person. It happened. We she's a huge, she's a family oh, yeah. member on this show. Oh, yeah. yeah. She I wears our her. swag too. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. I so, love so her. So real too. real quick, Cap, you gotta give us you gotta give us something that we can well, play real, for hoodie. Before he does that, I want to yeah. tell all these fans Cap has come on every pre-drafted during the draft show Nailed and he's predicted everyone correctly. Every well, we'll single one correctly. <laughs> you got Cap's hey, gonna take the layup cap. Cap's gonna come Chase on stream Drake May, and we're just gonna send him off screen real quick. Remember, he's, he's in Florida outside a restaurant walking. Right. Guys, I told I left you my drink on the table. I told oh, you, God. I just got a text from somebody at Hallis. We're trading for Justin Fields' rights. What? Yeah, it's and they amazing. did. That was Who was awesome. the other one I told you we were getting? You Kyler said Gordon. Kyler Gordon. Kyler Gordon. You were like, they're taking a defensive back. Yeah. And then the, the year before that, what was the year before that? Maybe Who it was last get, year, Darnell Wright. Justin. Yeah, Darnell Wright. Yeah, Darnell, Darnell Wright. Wright. Yep. But Darnell yeah, it was Wright. Justin, then Kyler. Justin, the Kyler, ones. then Darnell Wright. You've done every single one. We'll have you again predict. You shot a video. Because you were busy, but you still You're that's the, the kind of guy this yeah. guy is. I love April this 25. Guy. So I'll be at Soldier Field hosting on ESPN 1000 there and on YouTube. But I yeah. will call in or 
Use my phone. Yeah, and we'll I text will you do the link. Something. Just plan on it. I'll be there. I told I Cap, Cap, that. what you got to do, buddy? You got to get that jersey ready underneath what you're wearing. Nobody <laughs> knows it. Hysterical. As soon as it becomes Perfect. official, you rip it. You rip it off. That would be an all timer right there. Just oh spike God. the football right on Sylvie's. He's right taking by number. Sylvie. He's taking number thirteen, and and Cap and I talked about this earlier on the phone. Yeah. The Bears will probably say, oh, you're getting 13, but Caleb better do the right thing and pay Tyler Scott. Yeah, I'm sure you're he You're making will. legit money. Cut him a, a yeah, cap. Sure cut him a, cut him a check. Grand, give me 13. Yeah. Yes. Do the right 100%. thing. All right. What do you want Cap to do quick for Hoodie? And then oh, we'll we just him need go. him to, to record a quick spot, just busting Jay Hood's balls a little bit or something. Finally. That'll you're something awesome. that'll get under his skin a little bit. So he is a huge Mike Francesa guy. Oh, it's like every time it. we bring a guest yeah. in, it's Tommy. Good morning. How are you? And it, <laughs> it makes Waddle laugh. Yep. We do that with all our guests. And then he'll imitate Francesa where he'll be like, yeah. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the Giants. <laughs> and he goes nuts. So make sure you bust his balls. I grew up, up listening like to that. Oh, yeah. Here in New York. Here, that's all we did. Mike and a mad dog. At yeah. Hofstra, I met Francesa up there with his accent. Mikey loves the ponies. I'll tell I'll you that. I'll tell you right now that Wayne Crebet. ponies, but he loves the ponies. Yeah. <laughs> well, make sure you tell him that. he's the best. You tell him. You I tell him something right now. Go All ahead. Right. Hoodie, I love you. Take care of my guys, Phil and Shane. You are walking on hallowed ground, my friend. Yeah, that's right. Don't be dropping any Mike Francesa references. You're on with Phil and Shane. Take that, my guy. I love you. Look at you. Love it. He's the consummate professional. His wife's in Africa. He's taking care of the dogs. The ACL's ready and back. I love this guy. Every week, every morning, oh, yeah. he's bringing the truth on ESPN 1000. I go after the cult. Now I've... Now I just go oh, out. Yeah. He hears his phone go off now, and he's like, "I fuck it. Shane and Phil." Phil and Shane me some stats. <laughs> I'm always looking. Go. Oh, I got text about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's Coach Eberflus and Coach Lafleur. Yeah, there they are. Lafleur's like, dude, just keep keep going with Justin, please. Yeah, keep, keep Justin. <laughs> keep I Justin. don't need the headache. Yeah. Of Caleb Williams. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. I got to go to bed. All right, brother. All right, God bless you. Love yep. you, bro. I'm sure we'll talk in the next day or two. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. And we're going to love being on with you guys. And I love the friendship that we've developed. It's awesome. Love it. We love you, man, too. All and right. We'll talk. Feelings mutual. Yeah. Take All right. Care, great. David Kaplan of ESPN best. 1000. He's the best. Absolutely, man. It's... Wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't pretend. Uh, I know they give him a hard time on his show sometimes, but he wears his heart on his sleeve like we do here. Like patron Steve, $3. Yeah. He loves Cap. Let's go. Uh, HL Priest, I want to win. Fuck the politi political. I agree you with you. You can even you can even put the, the the actual word in there, HL. We won't even tell anybody. Yeah, you could have put the Deborah twenty dollars. Oh, Fuck, her. I didn't see it. We know that lady. We love her. Deb, your daughter's sick under the weather tonight. Wow, quote unquote sick. Deborah. Don't blow up. Her. Quote unquote, Miss Franklin. <laughs> we love you, Deb. You know you, you know who hasn't a... wrote though. You know who hasn't went through the vetting process yet, and that that will happen. So we will uh, we will Not take gonna... we will take care of your baby girl. Though. We We're will gonna... take care of her. She's the best. I'll make sure you send me whatever you wanted to say, and I'll read it. Stephen W. Again, patron Steve. Thank you, TTNL family. Uh, Blue Waves. Quay Walker on Justin Fields. Whenever we can keep him in the pocket and allow him just to play quarterback. Now, not allow him to run. We got a real, real good chance of winning the game. That's what we talk about here all the time. Phil, real this. quick, I think we might have to change tweets of the week to to YouTube comments of the week. Yes, because I get I some agree. doozies. I just got one that popped up on my phone, and this is amazing. This is amazing. Let's yes. hear it. Can we? And this is from 
J.R. Della Mancha, 9360. 34 minutes ago. 34. 34. Shout out to Sweetness. Caleb Williams is overrated. Just so you guys know, college success doesn't always transfer to the pro game. Well, thank you, genius. <laughs> I, had no idea. I like this. YouTube secrets. <laughs> YouTube. Behind the scenes with Shane and Phil. <laughs> YouTube comments. That Let's suck. move to the next fucking idiot on YouTube comments. <laughs> you got more? I like oh, this. Let me see. What oh, you got... guys don't understand is just. Oh, I do have a doozy here. Our guy, that, our guy that's always in our chat. Where is that? If I can find it. Oh, man. I oh, might have to. Is he back? No, 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 no. No, I think Nanos is or whatever is I think he's got a he's at a the he's at a Potter Puff game tonight scouting. I missed this before. Carrie Franklin, twenty dollars. He had a question. I'm sure it was for Cap. Text Cap how much we appreciate him, Shane. If you are running the Bears, would you release Justin Fields before drafting Caleb Williams? Release him? If there's no. no trade market for him. Hell no. Listen, twenty dollars. Phil has on pretty good authority that the Bears have been offered a third round pick plus. Not saying that it's going to be something else higher, but I would assume like a three and a five from a team. We'll just say in the AFC. And the Bears are probably waiting just a little bit to see. Listen, if the if Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta, then this team may up their offer a little bit. We don't know. But no, you you're not releasing him. You can't release him. I totally agree. You know, even <laughs> with the distraction, you have to find the right fit. You saw polls come out and destroy again a narrative that was created by some weird conglomeration of people that continue to try to manipulate truths that just don't <laughs> live there. But Ryan right. Pohl saying, I want to do right by Justin isn't a showcase so, of them wanting to build around justin do you want me to, you want me to go full-blown youtube comments here sure. i'll give you a whole thread because i had a back and forth with our guy unapologetic truth talk i guess he's a he's big not justin truthful. fields fan okay he commented on one of my shorts on youtube and unapolog unapologetic truth says but caleb holds the ball 3.25 seconds what are you talking about? This is a fact. And I responded, and why? Have you watched anything to learn why? And this is what he said. Shane, I'm from California and I'm a USC fan of 30 years. I have watched his games live and direct. Any more questions? Well, you know me. Of course, I had more questions. Live and direct. And this Boogie is what I said. Production. Yes, unapologetic truth. Game tape. Do you watch that or just the TV broadcast? Do you think Caleb held the ball just because of Caleb? And this is his response. No, son. No, son. I li oh, no, the son. son. He had to put yeah, the son. No, in. son. I live Not down the, the street from fine. LA Memorial Coliseum. I go to the games. Oh. To which I replied, no problem, old timer. So you think Caleb holds the ball because of an issue with himself then? He said, no, he holds the ball because it's Lincoln Riley's air raid system. He was asked to throw anticipated throws or throw wide receivers open. Now listen to this part. He was asked to throw anticipated throws or throw wide receivers open. In today's NFL, that doesn't translate. <laughs> okay anticipatory throws and throwing wide receivers open does not translate in the nfl i Great. fucking needed that laugh Great. Can you bring him on yeah because that's like basically the prerequisite to be in the Three nfl two five seconds is way too long when defensive ends are faster than in college 
Oh my, my response. He has all the tools you want a quarterback. The air raid wouldn't stop me from drafting him at all. Flawless, lightning quick release. Head is always downfield during the mesh. Great arm. Him running around to make plays speaks more about the lack of talent than anything. Abysmal defense puts you in a bind. Also, when you know you have to hunt for big plays all the time to have any type of a chance. Best quarterback prospect available by a mile. And it just unapologetic. It, it continued to go on and on, but it it continued. Definitely to go crazy. the first time that I've ever heard that anticipatory throws and throwing wide receivers open does not translate to the NFL. It's a very interesting point. Wow. I can't begin to believe that's like some saying of the hot takes. That's, that's like, like saying, saying go I ahead. hooked up with Estelle Getty. And it was yeah. just like having sex with Jessica Alba because they're both women. <laughs> Two completely different ends of the spectrum, but you got laid, right? Bravo. That's Great still, job. Great still, job. Great job, golden getting. girl. Great job, son. Nathan Hill, a dollar ninety. Christian Wilkins, baby. Make it happen, polls. I we will see. Cap. Ah uh, shit. Winnebago Bear 95. We apologize. I will make a screenshot of this and send it to Cap. Cap, love you, man. Chase greatness. Take that. As Cap would say it. Lawrence Chrisom, $5. This show is on fire when Caleb Williams gets called up as a bear. I hope Cap says take that. Justin feels one cult. Laugh out loud. Laugh out loud. Mr. Englewood, seventy-seven two dollars. Should the Bears look at Jamal Adams and Cushenberry? I really believe they traded for Ryan Bates. That's your center. That's I have your guy. No your interest. Starter. Less than zero interest in Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams could play wherever the Colt wants him to play. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Interest. We don't want him. Um, I'm just saying. The, I think the Cushenberry is getting overrated, honestly, for he what did he is. Improve he did improve. He did, but I think he's overrated for Bears fans are so desperate for a legitimate center. And I right now I have zero problem with with Ryan Bates. And like I said, he does not prevent you from upgrading. If for whatever reason a guy dropped into your lap, you pull the trigger. That's fine. Guess what? Then you have a guy that can replace Tevin. If Tevin gets hurt or if Nate Davis doesn't show up, it is, you know, it is what it is. But uh it's not Lucas Patrick again, Elmer. I'm gonna show you some tape on Patreon of Bates, so you can understand this kid is an athlete. Again, I don't know uh, the area with which the Chicago Bears or the Buffalo Bills, rather, wanted their football player to play. And the talent, you know, Mitch Morse is getting cut. They're making some moves. But I know the Bears have identified Bates before as a starting center for them. And... They're just going back to that. Whether you, I agree with Shane, you're covering your basis in, in the interior and you're right. getting a and starter. That was, just this, that was just this year, Jeremy. I mean, he, he had more there last year. And I'm here in New York. I have a lot of people that are connected to the organization and fans of the Buffalo Bills and, and to a man. Greg Thompson is a guy that I, I, chat with actually quite often um covers them for cover one uh, buffalo bills fan and th th he looked at ryan bates as a luxury for a team that's going to make a super bowl there was a lot of people that expected him to be the starting center for the buffalo bills while you're going for making your super bowl run but they are so financially strong you saw all of the moves that they made today i mean tradavius white gone restructuring von miller just uh, a, a whole laundry list of players deontay hardy who is a guy that i know phil and i both liked 
he he was released uh, amongst others you know financials play play into this but there was a lot of people at 27 years old that thought ryan bates was going to be the starting center for the for the buffalo bills and just we're gonna we're gonna break down every free agent that they bring in with tape not bullet points because we don't have access to it we we will show you all 22 tape believe it or not and of all these guys and the nfl tape a lot of these guys do the bullet points hell no peanut butter ninja no fucking is way. a tier by himself in a class of his own is caleb williams that is not a shock to anybody that's been listening to me over the last week whether it's on here or pro well it wouldn't be a shock to any of the ttnl fan base if you've been listening to us for the last year caleb williams i agree chris sims and a lot of these clickbait boys are the new age blog boys it's the clickbait boys that want to go on there and make sun and define and dig themselves in the sand but you're really not an analyst because when you look at the tape of caleb williams and what he's able to do on a football field, I don't care who's surrounding him. He makes them better. And that's the quantifier. That's the multiplier. Anybody I've challenged, it's open. My DMs are open on Instagram. I had a guy reach out to me tonight to come on the show. And I'm going to get him on the show. I will always step to the challenge. Bring your tape. Bring your tape. Because this is the best quarterback I've scouted, and that includes Andrew Luck and everyone under him. So Joe Burrow, all of them. The Chicago Bears have won the lottery. It's time to celebrate. Anyone saying that Justin Fields is staying and he's going to be, you're just fooling yourself. They're looking to trade him for a reason because they don't want, they want to do right by him. I get it. But in this world, of trying to go to championships. If you're going to stand at the podium and take your job as seriously as you should and say, we're going to take the North and never give it back, it starts with the quarterback. Justin Fields has been average to below. And I've, I've shown that on tape. I've shown that on tape. He's a good person. He's a great athlete. He's just not a great quarterback. And that... You can try to come at me with all of your reasonings. He needs this. He needs that. No, the same flaws he had with first-round talent surrounding him everywhere are still happening in year three going into year four. That's why the Bears are making this move. That's why they're making this move. And then all of the minutia and the bullshitters out there and – Cap called a few out by name tonight, which is Cap. I respect that. But, you know, all of the minutia, minutia of trying to tear this kid, Caleb Williams, down. I've spoke to his former uh, a coach of his. I've talked to a coach in that went against him. I've talked to another coach that coached him at Oklahoma. I've talked to three of his former teammates. All of them to a man not only praise the talent but they get more hyped up about the human being like do not punish the kid for the sins of the father the father could be a certain way and let's face it there's a problem in this world in regards to youth sports and parents and fights and guns and and bullshit about that so parents yes can be a problem right but you're not going to blame Caleb Williams, nor are you going to manipulate lies. Lawrence Holmes, come out and apologize. You were freaking wrong. He's 6'1 and 1 8. That's measured at the combine. You kept calling him 5'11, tripling down on him. Well, he's 6'1 and 1 8, and he's the best quarterback the Chicago Bears will ever have as far as talent stepping in the door. What he does is on him. It's no different than Patrick Mahomes' brother. It's no different than the next person. You can't punish the player for others. When people do that, and then they start making up stories that aren't true, like there's nobody talking about Caleb Williams 
in a bad light. In fact, even it was embarrassing, embarrassing watching people completely go out of their way to Peter Schrager's tweet about Caleb Williams' character. He's the kind of guy that stood around and cheered other quarterbacks, other teammates, other friends on while they went through the drills and then went around and thanked everybody at the combine because that's his character. Whether you think it or not, you holster your tweeter and put that away. But no, you decide to go out there and say, this, you believe this shit? That's a con right there. He's a diva. He's a fraud. That's terrible. Right. It's a disgrace. Yeah. When do you think Fields trade is announced? When they get a partner? Yeah, when they when they feel like they've got it. made a deal. Yeah, I, I I had a couple of text messages from people asking me the same thing. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I I know when they're gonna announce it. I I don't. Maybe the guy from the barber shop heard. That. Right. I know I'm not from I know I'm not from Boston, Darius. Will you draft interviews this year? I don't understand what do you, you have. Will you have draft interviews this year? Yeah, we may re reach out to some people. I've been in contact. Oh, with I got you. Yeah, I'm sorry. A couple people. It's just I'm trying to understand know, what he meant. It's players I'm, on. It's hard, yeah. especially in this day and age where agents get worried about their players saying the wrong thing and have it become yeah. clickbait. Yeah. And we found that it's been more important to show actual tape. Like there's a lot of people out there that say that they break out tape that don't have access to college tape. It's actually pretty funny. We do. And uh, we find that that's way more important to do that. You know, I know I have access to it here in New York. Phil has access to it in Connecticut, even though yes. we're Bears fans. So, yes. yeah, it's important. Yeah. We're not from Chicago. <laughs> like that matters. Yeah. <laughs> that Sorry. Mattered. Sorry, Darius. Guess what? We had the the number one uh, morning show in Chicago on our show. Yeah. Oh, I knew it. We're going to have this partner next week. Yeah, yeah. I knew a dude that has the number six podcast in Singapore. I can't, I can't imagine the fucking that Ryan dude put be, that dude must be cleaning up. Ryan Remy put some money on this to the Broncos. Do you see that happening? Who to the Broncos? Justin Fields? Justin Fields. Where would you think would be the you think Atlanta is the best fit? Or well, Pittsburgh. I've said you've always long, said Pitt. no, I've said Pittsburgh for the I, yeah. I said Pittsburgh back on Cars Keys in like November before the season was even open. We were talking about it. Just it made sense to me because I was obviously never a believer in Mitch Trubisky or Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett. I would have never drafted in the first place. Mm -hmm. I just think he fits there. You know, he's a he's not a guy that you're ever going to have to worry about off the field. He's going to be a hard worker. But and there's there's some upside if you can unlock him. You'll see where it goes. I just think it makes sense there. Good defense. See where it goes. But I also understand. Listen, if I'm running Atlanta and I don't have access to a, a, a quarterback, am I flipping a pick for Justin Fields to see where I can go with yeah. Justin and Bijan and Kyle Pitts and and Drake London and these guys? Hell yeah, I am. You this all right boils am. down. Kirk Cousins, can you imagine? Is like controlling his free wife. agency. His wife is from Atlanta. So if, where he falls, now all of the rest will fall. So if he stays with Minnesota, that opens up the door, the path for Justin to be traded to Atlanta. Yeah. That's how crazy this is. That's how nuts this whole thing is. Keon Coleman. Thoughts on Keon, Shane? I am not he is not on my i'm not a not a huge keon coleman fan i know we had this chat a little bit yesterday i know you're higher on him than i am right not a not a big i keon like keon 
I like Keon Coleman. Yeah. Again, Phil, Phil and I usually have a difference of opinion on wide receivers. I usually like guys that are actually good, and Phil goes with guys that don't do so great. So it's that's where we defer. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there you go. Uh, first signing in free agency, Shane. You've called your shots a lot. And then <laughs> the first are, one. Who's going to be the first signing for the Chicago Bears? It's it's happening next week. Well, Monday is the 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 tampering yeah. period opens. I mean, listen, if it, if you're involved, listen, if you're going to get involved with Christian Wilkins, you're in it to win it. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a that's a day one big money guy out the gate. I'm a little bit more leery of paying guys on the interior of the defensive line massive amounts of money. It just there's not a there's some guys there that it has has worked out. I understand the thought process of going after him. I get it. I do get it. I just my focus knowing me, I, I'm targeting guys that are very young with upside and that's that's more so where i would go wilkins is 20 what he's going to be 28 i think he's going to be 28 or maybe he already is 28 right in that range yeah i'm i would love jones yeah i get it dude i just don't think he's leaving i don't think he's leaving kc yeah i would love jones but Wilkins is there. You you're right. I think the interior, but I think they have enough money to do a oh, an yeah. end and a de defensive tackle and a running back and a receiver. I think they have enough money. I think the trade to Shane's credit, you're getting a starting center there. I know people yeah. in Buffalo, like Shane said, they're disappointed that this kid's going. Now the Bears have wanted him, and now you're getting your center there. Now it opens up your draft for what it is and how you're going to attack free agency like xavier mckinney is a guy that i would go after in free agency as safety. From the giants yeah he's 24 years old and that's that, that would be you're going to be spending time. again if you're going to be spending money i'm spending it on guys that are young and guys that have upside i i get it so I you wouldn't he, sign the left tackle from the cowboys Tyron Smith, if you want to, Smith, if you want to, I would have no problem if they signed him to a one-year deal to bring him here, but not like a three-year deal. At thirty-three cool. years old, it depends on what the guarantees are there, yeah, for sure. But he's been dinged up a little bit too. I mean, I get it. You want to, you people are saying that they're going to be very calculated in free agency, and I'm not saying that they need to go out there and just be. Um, Daniel Snyder back in the in the the Washington days and have an open book. You have to be calculated, but you have to be precise, and you have to go out and you have to go after it. The entire reason that you reset the rookie clock financially is you go out there and you go after guys. Now, is it going to be Saquon Barkley, a guy that has a ton of explosion, but has proven? that he gets dinged up every year or is it going to be a guy like josh jacobs that's a little bit younger a little bit more durable but not quite as explosive if they delve into the, the free agent market it's going to be it's going to be interesting but i mean i i would say if, if they're going to be in on wilkins my my guess would be it's that they're going to come out the gates swinging they're going to make a statement and that it's going to be boom they're going to they're going to get a deal done like that if that's their if that's their target obviously if you're just tuning in we had the great david kaplan on the show tonight we're gonna wrap up early tonight shane is gonna get to bed i'm gonna get to bed help the wife out with the dog it's been a tough week here for all of us as we continue to get through this sign up become a patron the tape never lies.com and it'll start turning our page towards the wide receivers and defensive linemen in this draft draft mob going to be starting up 
and a lot of breakdowns to continue with the another quarterback. Name. It's another name I wouldn't I wouldn't dismiss, DeAndre Swift. Jason McKee came out and said Josh Jacobs, former Bama, Bama boy. Uh Chris R. 490 Phil Shane. I was watching Caleb Williams tape. One thing about the Riley system was it seemed to always have the QB move to the middle of the field. Is that what he's what's M O F? Uh, one thing about the Riley system was it seemed to always have the quarterback move to the middle of the field. Did you see that too? I don't see middle of the field movement. No, I, I see. I see again, RPO West Coast. If you're a TTNL patron, you saw the massive difference when you go from Caleb Williams. It, it, it's why when I see people say that. Jaden Daniels is the clear cut QB two in this draft. I I'm either really really bad at what I do, or the other people are just smarter than me. I could because if, saying that he's QB two in all the tape that we put up of him and TTNL patrons, if you're there in the chat, put it in there. You want to call there's people out there calling Caleb Williams a one read guy, which is fucking laughable. It's, you you're literally making shit up to try to prove your point, but then you're gonna promote Jaden Daniels, who is guess what? A one read quarterback, one read then bail, one read then one or then run. I I I don't know, man. It's we got 50 days of this left. It's crazy. It's hard to deal with the drama. That's why we I'm, just I'm come staying on here with Justin shooting. fucking Fields all day long over drafting Jaden Daniels. And it's not even for me, it's not even close. I'm not even a Drake May fan, and I would draft Drake May over Jaden Daniels. I feel the gap you, between I've Caleb said it, I've said on it all of these time. guys. Yeah. It's it's immense. It's why it's a joke when you see Dan Orlovsky come out there and say what he says or anybody going against the grain to try to capture lightning in a bottle later. You're betting on a bust. It's not an analyzing. It's gambling. Just, if you want to put your name to that, that's on you. But we actually do the work here. So come on and show, show us why we're wrong. That's yeah. I've That's asked fine. everybody. I've given yeah. that challenge. You have frauds out there. They're just making <laughs> it up, and then they become Justin Fields, like, dug-in fans, and nothing could be said that is wrong, and it, there's a hell of a lot. Johnny Santino, our guy. $20. $20. Johnny Santino. Is there a pool running on who from the cast is going to take the big moment this draft? Like cars. Chicago is trading up. Yeah, this is easy for me. Or rank coming in after the fields trade with what the fuck. Hope everyone is doing well. To me, this is easy. And I am not going to spoil it. Who it's going to be or how it's going to be. <laughs> but the guy on the screen with me, I know is already <laughs> laughing because he knows where I'm going. And I'm not going to talk about it. We'll just... Let it happen organically, live on air. Yeah, because I don't know how I feel, to be honest. Like how so many years I've waited for a quarterback at this level to be involved with the Bears. And I thought there was a, a chance for Jay Cutler. Like I saw the elite arm talent and the ability, but. It didn't happen. His personality is what you're trying to portray onto this kid, which is completely a lie. It's manipulation. It's disappointing. You could be a Bears fan. You could still like Justin Fields and understand there's another level of quarterback play that's about to enter the arena, and it's going to knock motherfuckers out, and that's what it's all about. So when I'm looking for a quarterback, I look at all the talent and then the personality. There's going to be some tears of joy or emotion that I can't even explain when that happens. But it will happen organically. I can't even 
begin to imagine it, it, it as Kaplan said it perfectly we're gonna be nervous my heart's gonna be racing and then it's gonna be an explosion but anyway I love all of you fans we had a lot of fun tonight uh Cherie I hope you get better Jackal breaking down little league baseball in with his team yeah he's at a board meeting and we'll be back next week with jay jonathan hood jay hood jay hood jumping on the show hello Paul, how are you <laughs> we'll have to see his uh impression i want to get and the story behind that where it I all bet you like yeah that's started. i'm i don't want to guess but my thoughts is he grew up listening to him too dialing up that area but anyway become a patron ryan gates i'm starting to cut his tape to show you what you're gonna get in ryan bates rather did i say gates you did that Bates. sorry but anyway let's get out of here had a good night shout out to all of you shout out to my boy david uh he loves the show i love all Jesus, Sherry. <laughs> kind of wedge that in there. David Greenberg, Kiernan, uh, Hector, or uh, Luis, all of you guys that reached out. All of you guys in the chat tonight. Have a great night. Anthony Gordon, Sam, bear down. I'm not smart. He knows better than we do. <laughs> Who would know better than him? Want to close it out? This is the way we do. See you guys next week. We love you all. Hey, fuckers. This is Brian Erlacher, and I'm keeping it 100 on the Tape Never Lies Network. Oh. Tape Never Lies Network. Tape Never Lies. Keeping it 100 like I'm keeping it 100 when it comes to the Bears. I think the, the tape, tape never lies, right? The tape never lies. It never does. I'm not smart. Get your hat and get the bell up the field. This is Lauren Cox from Locked On Bears, and I'm keeping it 100. You guys know the tape never lies. Hey, this is David Kaplan. Listen to me. You want to learn football? Listen to my guys, Phil and Shay. Keeping it 100. The tape never lies network. Courtney Cronin, beat reporter, covering the Chicago Bears for ESPN and ESPN.com. And I am keeping it 100 on the tape, never left. I'm Raymond Harris, the Quiet Storm, a.k.a. Ultraback. And I'm keeping it 100 on the tape, never lies network. Home of the greatest Chicago Bears fans on earth. 